Hey there, it's Yuichi Namura from Art Namura. Today, I'm going to talk about the process of making the Shikoku 88 Temples Pilgrimage Scroll. So, Shikoku 88 Temples refers to the 88 temples in Shikoku that are connected to the famous monk, Kobo Daishi Kuakai. People visit each temple, collect temple stamps on a Nokiojiku, a blank pilgrimage scroll, and once they've collected all the stamps, they bring it to professionals like us to be mounted and transformed into a proper hanging scroll. It's really popular nationwide, and we often get requests for this work at our company too. This time, we got a special request for the Shikoku Pilgrimage Scroll. From Switzerland. We've worked with Swiss customers a few times before, and in my experience, they tend to be super polite and very knowledgeable about Japanese culture. This customer was no exception. He was really into Japanese culture. And get this, he actually walked the entire Shikoku pilgrimage route. I was blown away. The pilgrimage is about 1,200 kilometers, and even for healthy, fit people, it usually takes around 45 days to complete. For a foreigner to do it all on foot, that's seriously impressive. Apparently, it was really tough. His feet were swollen, and he said he got so many blisters that they just kept popping. By the end, his feet were so tough from all the walking. He even had to buy new shoes because his feet were too swollen for his old ones. What's more, he did the pilgrimage in the Junuchi style, which means visiting the temples in numerical order starting from Temple 1 all the way to Temple 88. It's harder than other ways because you can't take shortcuts you have to visit each temple in order. But he knew that and still chose to do it that way. Before he started the pilgrimage, he even visited Mount Koya to pray, saying something like, I'm about to start the Shikoku pilgrimage. And when he finished, he went back to report that it was done. I found it so admirable almost like he was more Japanese than most Japanese people. It sounds like he had an amazing time on the pilgrimage. He loved the beautiful nature, and the local people were really kind to him. He was super satisfied with the whole experience and just hoped the scroll would turn out well. No pressure, right? Ah ha ha ha. Alright then, let's take a look at the process of making this customer Shikoku 88 Temple's pilgrimage scroll. <coughs> We use a lot of water during the mounting process, so we apply a color fixing agent several times to prevent the ink and vermilion stamps from smudging. After repeating the color fixing and drying process several times over a few days, we move on to Hata Ureuchi, the first backing, where we smooth out the wrinkles by applying moisture to the artwork. Since this step involves using a lot of water, the color fixing process is really essential. Alright, now that we've finished smoothing out the wrinkles, next we'll move on to Hata Ureuchi, the first backing, where we'll apply adhesive to the Japanese paper and then attach it to the back of the artwork. Once we've finished applying the adhesive to the Japanese paper, the next step is to remove any dust or fibers stuck to the backing paper. Even small fibers can interfere with viewing the artwork if left behind, so we need to carefully search and remove them. It's a pretty tedious task, but it's really important. Plus, you definitely need good eyesight for this job. Before we start the Hata Ureuchi first backing, we also check the back of the artwork to make sure there's no dust or debris stuck to it. Alright, it's finally time for Hata Ureuchi the first backing. While lifting the Japanese paper with my left hand, I'll use the brush in my right hand to gently press it onto the back of the artwork. As I do this, I also have to slowly move forward, coordinating my hands and feet carefully. This unique movement, where I have to be mindful of my left hand, right hand, 
and my steps all at the same time, requires a lot of focus. If anything gets out of balance, wrinkles can form in the paper, the paper might tear, or air could get trapped between the artwork and the paper. So, I really need to concentrate with every move. Once I've finished smoothing the paper, the next step is to tap it from the back with the brush. This helps the fibers in the paper bond more strongly with the artwork and also removes any trapped air between the paper and the artwork. As long as I use my wrist to snap the brush and make sure it hits the surface properly, I don't need to apply much force. Alright, once the backing is done, we move on to a process called Kari Bari temporary sticking, where we temporarily attach the artwork to a board to let it dry. Alright, the temporary sticking is done, and here's the artwork after taking it off the board. Now, I'll trim the excess parts of the artwork into a rectangle and cut the fabric to fit the size of the piece. Here's the fabric the customer chose. We showed him a variety of fabrics, but he really liked this one. It's a Kenran fabric, which is a type of gold brocade, but it's not too flashy or shiny. It has a more subdued gold tone, which gives it a sophisticated and elegant look. He immediately said, this one is the best, and made a quick decision. It seems he was thinking a lot about what kind of fabric to choose before coming to us, but this pattern wasn't something he expected. As soon as he saw it, he loved it right away. Now, I'll cut the fabric to match the size of the artwork and get it ready. Alright, I've cut the different types of fabric into various sizes and placed them around the artwork. Now, I think you can really get a sense of how the final scroll will look. From here, I'll use adhesive to attach the fabrics to the artwork. This next step, called, Tsukemawashi, where we carefully attach the fabric, is the most important part of making it look like a proper hanging scroll. So, let's get to work. The process of attaching all the different fabric pieces with only about a 3mm margin of adhesive is called Tsukemawashi cut and join. Since the cut edges of the fabric tend to fray, we first press them down with some adhesive to smooth them out. After that, we carefully join the fabrics together. At this point, we have to be really careful not to use too much adhesive, as it could stain the fabric or the artwork. But if we use too little, the fabric won't stick properly and could peel off. Finding the right balance here really takes experience. The process of folding in the edges of the fabric slightly is called Mimi Ori. This serves to reinforce the sides of the scroll and protect the artwork. Lastly, we'll attach the necessary parts to the top and bottom of the scroll. Alright, here's the finished Shikoku 88 Temple's Pilgrimage Scroll that we made for our customer from Switzerland. Since the Nokiojiku the Pilgrimage Stamp Sheet needs space for 88 stamps, 
it naturally ends up being a bit wider, which makes the scroll itself larger too. This extra width gives it an even more majestic and impressive appearance than usual. The fabric the customer chose perfectly matches the piece and really brings out the beauty of the artwork. Today, I shared the story of this scroll we made for a customer from Switzerland. It's great to think that scrolls like this can help people from other countries grow to love Japan. Honestly, the demand for our work as scroll mounters is declining in Japan, and it's slowly being forgotten. But through requests like these from overseas, I believe we can find new meaning and purpose in what we do. I also want to continue valuing these opportunities from international clients, as it gives us a chance to rediscover Japanese culture. At our company, we handle projects like this Shikoku 88 Temple Scroll, and we offer more than dozens of fabric samples to choose fro depending on your budget. Please feel free to contact us. We look forward to working with you. Thank you very much.